Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' fascinating book. Tell me, Seth Port, close that door, someone. What was it? I'm not sure. I believe it's an arrow. Monsieur Clayton is right. It is an arrow. Mais, non, non, mon Dieu, professeur, do not touch it. The natives in these parts use poisoned arrows. Whoever it was must be fearless to come so close to the hut with all these sailors moving about me here on the beach. Not fearless, monsieur. Merely cautious. What is it, Clayton? Eh? Uh, oh, pardon me. Come, come, come Clayton. Me. Out with it. You are not the man to pass remarks without reason. I prefer not to say anything. Uh, but, Monsieur Clayton, surely in a matter of such importance to Monsieur le Professeur... Very you... well. This arrow is like a dozen others I saw in Tarzan's quiver. Uh, of course, Clayton, you are entitled to your opinion that this jungle man who has rescued us is Tarzan. But, on the other hand, how do you explain the fact that the jungle man neither understands nor talks English? Yet, yet we have here a tangible evidence in the shape of a printed warning signed by himself that Tarzan does understand English, and, and quite well, too. I don't pretend to be able to explain it. I feel it. Incidentally, I'm probably wrong in all of my deductions. But if, if this jungle man is not the one who fired the arrow, then who is? This is my explanation. Le cannibal. Then if the cannibal shot the arrow, and since I myself have seen similar arrows in the ape man's quiver, it seems reasonable to assume that the ape man has some contact with the cannibal. As to that, of course, we cannot answer. No. Exactly. I shall go and question the men as to whether or not any of them saw anything. But I think not. If they had, I feel sure they would have mentioned it. Uh, you, you bring up a very important point, Clayton. Very important. Very disconcerting. Very disconcerting. Because it disconcerted me was the reason I was loath to mention it. But we might as well face the fact. Oh, it's all very puzzling. For the life of me, I cannot see why this man should have been so solicitous about our welfare and then act in the manner you suggest, Clayton. Except that, of course, Clayton fired at him last night and he may have returned to avenge himself. No. Sorry, Philander. But that is not the answer either. You see, the fellow, when I fired at him, disappeared into the trees. If he had wished to kill me, he would have done it then, comfortably, without fear of detection. Uh, yes, yes, Clayton, uh, you're right. And that makes it all the more reasonable that the arrow was shot by one of the blacks. But great Scott, Professor, we've been here for weeks and have never seen hide nor hair of the blacks. And now, because of two or three footprints and a poisoned arrow... We jump to the conclusion that the jungle is infested with cannibals. Very true, Clayton. And very puzzling. Very, very puzzling. Uh, of course, Philander. Uh, of course, we, we mustn't discount that drumming we heard the day before Jane was captured. Oh, that's quite right. And also, we have Darno's word for it, that there are cannibals quite close at hand. All that puzzles me is, why have we not seen or heard them before? Monsieur, the men saw and heard nothing, but we have discovered footprints and many of them. Then, if Jane is in the hands of the blacks, she must be nearby. In a very short time, it will be daylight. We shall follow then the trail, and I pray Le Bon Dieu will grant us success. Over the jungle, the tropic dawn flings myriad fingers of iridescent light. Jane Porter, in the rude shelter built for her by Tarzan, wakes and lies listening to the muted voice of the wakening jungle. The fog of the night before has disappeared, and the patch of sky above shows hard and bright. Down by the water hole, jungle beasts make way for the majestic bulk of Tantor, the elephant. Jane brushes aside the leafy screen of her resting place and looks out. Tarzan is gone. She rises and moves out onto the platform, looks about her. There, coming through the middle terrace, his arms piled high with fruit, is Tarzan. Good morning, White Skin. You're up early. Early? 
the ape man lays the fruit on the mossy carpet and springs into the branches. Tenderly, he lifts Jane and gracefully, easily carries her to the ground. Jane, hungry. Eat? Yes, white skin. Jane, hungry. Eat. Together, they sit down to a breakfast of wild fruit. The heir to the Greystoke land and titles, and this American girl, Jane Porter, who believes that Cecil Clayton is the heir to Greystoke, and that somewhere in this wild jungle, Clayton, her father, and Philander are searching for her. Jane holds a wild plum toward Tarzan. Plum, white skin? Plum. Plum? Plum. Plum, 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 plum. White skin? Eat plum. <laughs> white skin, you learn easily, quickly. Quick? Quickly? Quickly. Yes, white skin. But you have a little difficulty with that one. One? Yes, one. Jane holds up one finger, then two, and repeats the numbers alternately. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Jane, one. White skin, one. Jane, white skin, two. That's it. Now you started to count. Count? No. No, 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 no. That, that's too hard. Jane picks up the quiver of arrows that Tarzan has laid aside when he sat down to eat. The ape man quickly takes them from her. Drawing one of the arrows from the quiver, he points to the darkly smudged tip. Kill. Kill quick. Kill. Poisoned? Tarzan looks puzzled. He has just learned the word kill. Used it as he believes in the proper sense. And now, he looks inquiringly at Jane. Yes, white skin. Kill. Jane makes a gesture of repugnance as she thrusts the arrow from her, but Tarzan springs to his feet, turns, and helps Jane to hers. He takes the bow and, fitting an arrow to the string, motions to the girl to stand in front of him. Jane grips the bow. Tarzan places his hand about hers. One, two. I understand. One, two. And Tarzan repeats the one, two as he places Jane's first finger above the arrow, the second below it, and pulls the bow string taut. While Jane is receiving her first lesson in archery, Clayton, Professor Porter, Philander, and the sailors under Lieutenant Darno start on their safari. Well, in some ways, I'm sorry to see the end of this hut. And in others... I'm I... glad. Inactivity drives me wild. We can't find Jane hanging around this hut. Uh, yes, Clayton. Doing, doing anything, no matter how useless it appears, is better than thinking, thinking... Thinking all the time. Ah, bien. Are we ready, monsieur? The ship will leave in just a little time to go back down the coast. Right, oh, yes, uh, Quite ready. Allo, mes enfants. Chacun à sa porte. I will close the door. I think it's better. Yes, Philander. Although there is something final about closing a door. Still, I think perhaps we had better leave it as we found it. Come on. You don't want to get separated? Come All in, right, Clayton. Clayton. We'll Come be right in. with you. We'll be right with you. While Jane Porter has been practicing with bow and arrow, she's been actively turning her over in her mind phrases and words with which she can convey to white skin as she calls Tarzan, not knowing that he is Tarzan, phrases that will let him understand her wish that she must return to the hut. White skin! Jane! Tarzan lowers the bow. Jane steps close to him. She pretends to struggle with him, raising and lowering her arm as though her hand held a knife. She enacts the scene of Tarzan's killing of Turkos. White skin! Kill! Eat! Jane! White skin! Go! Go quickly. White skin, kill. Turquoise. Jane. White skin, go. Go quickly. Yes, yes, but, but, oh, if I could only make you understand. For the moment, Jane stands undecided. If only she had some way to get White Skin's mind directed toward the hut. Quickly, she thinks again of the various words White Skin has learned. The fire. It, it couldn't have been the hut. White Skin would have been upset. What could it have been? The beacon. The beacon Clayton built. That's it. Then... Then there must be a ship. White skin. White skin. Jane, go. Fire. 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 <sighs> Tarzan indicates the fire was blown out. Yes, yes. Fire out. Jane, white skin, go. Fire. Tarzan grasps the meaning. He bends down, picks Jane gently from her feet, and leaps into the low-hanging branches. 
swiftly, unerringly, from branch to branch, vine to vine, the ape man carries the girl upward and onward. What is that? A ship. Ship? Yes, yes, a ship. Oh, we may be rescued after all. Oh, hurry, White Skin, hurry. Hurry. Yes, go, go quickly. And Tarzan, understanding Jane's excitement, speeds with her in his arms toward the hut and the ship. 